Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Welcome to the Hump Day edition of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Always appreciate you tuning us on in wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earl. Earl? Earth. Damn it. I got Earl and or Merle and Earth mixed up. I'm so excited because Merle is here. Merle it up, people. Merle it up. Dirty Filth is here with another cartoon. And our special guest tonight from Bats in the Belfry in Virginia City, Nevada, Start of the Gold Rush. Debbie Bender is here as well. We have all of you to join us, and thank you for that. We have Tim Mothman and his goatee in the gold medal position. Race fan with a silver. Wildberry with a bronze medal tonight. And Michael Morris and Joanne. How you doing? Look at them merling it up already. Holy cow. Here we go. I'm excited about this. Brown Dwarf, Chris 716. Kenny Blankenship, Woo Poo. How you doing? The period dot is here. There he is. Shane will be signing autographs after the show because he only shows up once a month. Line up to the left of the studio, if you don't mind, to the left of the studio. Parasolo, nice to see you. And John Lamb, thank you for joining us as we continue to merle it on up here. Phyllis Boucher Perry, thanks for coming on in. Ozzy Ange, nice to see you as we continue on with roll call here. Number 76 in your program, starting on defense from Stockholm, Sweden, Lars Janssen. Good to see you, buddy. Stargazer, thanks for coming on in. Guardian Jackpot is back. Guardian Jackpot will be signing autographs after the show as well. Line up to the right of the studio, if you don't mind, to the right of the studio. Sandy B, how you doing? Merle's even Merling himself. And there's Sasquatch guy, Eternity Eternal. Kathy Evans. Millennium, my man. Good to have you all here. With our roll call, let us say hello next to Christine Lynn. Thank you for joining us. Kurt M., nice to see you. And, and yes, it is Merle time, period dot. It is Merle time. Gizmo, Marty Burback, Chris, Pixie Lara. How you doing? Let's get our Merling on. That's right. Merle it on in. And Philip Bacanuts, how you doing? Aloha, Dave. From Mexico. Thank you for coming on in. Eternity Eternal. Good to see you. Robert Lamoth, Richard Elmore, Mama Susan. Thank you for coming on in. Here we go with roll call as we say hello to Buckethead, the soothsayer. He's merling it up right there. Appreciate it. Your guitar skills are awesome. Jojo, or maybe it's a soft J. Yo yo. Yo yo or Jojo? Melvin from Mars, thanks for co coming in. Me Woiken, Susan Alloway, who will be our guest tomorrow night. Double Day has returned. Good to see you all. Dirty Filth is here. Skip to Malou, good morning to you. Hi, Digger Dog. Mama Catherine, Mwah! see you in three and a half weeks, my friend. I love you, and we'll see you soon. I got a big hug for you, too. All right. Jorgensen, welcome to SOR Chat. And Eternity Eternal, Merling and Hard right there. Jennifer, thanks for coming on in. Doug Shelby is here. The Doug Shelby has arrived. Oh, my God, that just killed my throat. <clears throat> As we can officially start this show, because the Doug Shelby has arrived. Pat, Pat Leal, thanks for coming on in. And who is next here? Oh, look at that heavy Merling right there. Crystal J, good to see you. 
My audience, Debbie, absolutely loves their Merle. They need Merle time. Aaron Baca, thanks for joining us. And Turbo Tone, welcome back. Hey, let's get the radio side going, shall we? Hello and welcome to the radio and podcast side of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott, your host, as it is Ghost of the Great White North. Our main man, Merle, is here. Debbie Bender is here from Bats of the Belfry in Virginia City. We're talking ghosts tonight along the Gold Rush Trail. Hell yeah, it's going to be good. Very good. Audra Murray, welcome to SOR Chat. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Hello there, Deidre over on Vancouver Island. Thank you for coming on in. Hi, Asteroid. And Rono Ur, Sensational Sherry. Appreciate you joining us. Don't forget the Super Chat is open. It's a wonderful way to support what we do on this show on a nightly basis. And you can shop at our Spaced Out Radio store. We do not have ugly swag, people. No ugly swag. You can wear our stuff proudly in public. Yeah, even your Merle t-shirts. Horns up. Let's rock. From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on Odyssey Radio, TalkStream Live, and KPNL. All of our archives are free. Join us at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. You can follow us on X at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on Patreon in the Space Travelers Club. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the newswire, check out our swag as well. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by visiting Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. We got a power show of Paranormal tonight. Merle from the Paranormal Road Trippers is here for Ghosts of the Great White North. We're heading to Virginia City with this one tonight. Then in hour number three, Steve Stockton from Among the Missing is here, followed up by Courtney Marcassani and UFO Court. Yes, it is that time of the month once again where we are joined by our main man, Merle, and Ghost of the Great White North. Merle is a one of Canada's top paranormal investigators based out of Vancouver, British Columbia, and he's here to talk ghost schools and goblins with Debbie Bender from Bats in the Belfry out of Virginia City, Nevada. And the reason why I am so excited about this paranormal show is the Gold Rush Trail literally started in Reno. And guess what? It goes right behind my studio, some 1,500 miles north, maybe 1,800 miles north, and keeps going for another literally 1,800 miles, where back in the 1800s, early 1900s, people were searching for their fortunes along this trail. A lot of death, a lot of murder, a lot of crime, theft, and successful stories of people striking it rich. Our main man, Merle, I'm excited to have you here. Welcome back to Spaced Out Radio. And Debbie Bender, thank you for joining us on Spaced Out Radio tonight. Merle, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Dave. I'm looking forward to this show because, geez, is it three weeks away and we're, uh, we're catching the same plane together. How cute is that? That is very cute. I actually, you booked your flight, and I actually went and said, Merle, let's ride and fly together, man. I'll take the four hour, 44 minute. Imagine that four hours, 44 minutes, four, four, four. That's a lucky number for a lot of people, but that's our, our literal delay between Vancouver to LA, LA to Reno. It's our layover. Dude, we saved $23. A whole 23 bucks. Yep. You know, Merle, just so you know, Merle's the type of guy who actually brings coupons into the supermarket. He's, that, he's, he's coupon guy. 
you know, but we have uh, Debbie Bender here from Virginia City, where on our fan party on May 10th through 12th in Reno, Nevada, one of the attractions that we have going is that people who show up get the opportunity, if they want, to head over to Virginia City to take the tour, where literally the gold rush began. Debbie, welcome to Spaced Out Radio, and thank you for being here. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Merle, why does Virginia City excite you? Virginia City excites me because it reminds me of like the place we talk about all the time, Dave, Barkerville. It's the Wild West. It's got your brothels. It's got your old Wild West hotels. It's got murder, drama, mystery, hauntings. And um, I'm excited to go explore it um, for our fan weekend. But I'm also going there by myself for four nights after the fan weekend to to investigate and sniff around. So that'll be good. Um, Debbie, how did Virginia City start? Let's let, let's start. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Well, it's about 1859 uh, when Henry Comstock and James Fenimore, known as Old Virginia, discovered what would become the Comstock. Well, they discovered gold, and eventually silver was discovered, and it was one of the biggest silver strikes this country had known, and. People became millionaires overnight. Damn. And that's where the uh, probably a lot of the drama happened and a lot of people flooding to there to try and to, to make their money. How, how long did the boom last in Virginia City? You know, there's they're still technically taking gold and silver out of the mountain today. Um, so it's never fully went away. But, you know, around the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, it, it got harder and harder to get the gold out and things started to slow down a whole lot and people went their separate ways. Did you know, Debbie, and this is a little Canadian history for you, that the creation of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police happened because of the Gold Rush Trail? Really? Wow. Yes. So back in the day when everybody started heading north towards the Klondike, what happened was it was becoming very lawless and people were, were getting robbed. People were getting murdered. People were getting uh, injured and stabbed and having their life savings taken away from them and kidnapped and you name it. And so what happened is Canadian parliament, which was only established in 1867, decided to pass an act to the, create the Northwest mounted police. And that was on May 23rd, 1873, to help literally allow people to get to and from where they needed to go on the Gold Rush Trail safely. And at that point, the Northwest Mounted Police did not even carry weapons. <laughs> wow. Well, everybody in Virginia City apparently carried weapons back then. <laughs> it was pretty lawless for quite a while. What are what are some famous stories of Virginia City? How how like what makes everyone want to go there today? Um, you know, we really have to thank Ghost Adventures for really truly putting Virginia City on the map globally. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of us that have been up there a lot longer trying to do the ghost stuff, but they really kind of put the stories out there and stuff. And the evidence they caught at the Washoe Club was really amazing. And the nice thing about Virginia City is it's very accessible to people. You know, most of the places you see these the ghost shows go is not the place the average person can have access to. But in Virginia City, you can tour the Washoe Club. You can tour the Mackey Mansion. You can tour Piper's Opera House. You know, all of those places and hopefully have an experience for yourself while you're doing it. Ghost Adventures, they that's they got their break from documenting in and around Virginia City, right? It was um Virginia City and but mostly it was the brick at Goldfield Hotel. Goldfield, yeah. Yeah. But they have that, I don't know if you've seen it, they caught the full bodied apparition moving across the ballroom in the Washoe Club. Yes. That was pretty that, good. That's that is damn good. I'm excited to um to check all these buildings out. I've been doing a lot of a lot of my research, and I have 
I'm allowed to investigate the Gold Hill Hotel. So I'm quite excited about that. Nice. Very nice. What can you, so the Gold Hill Hotel, that's one of the, the paranormal people's havens to go stay at and experience. What can you tell us about that place? The hauntings specifically? Um, it's Gold Hill's a little bit outside of Virginia City, so it's definitely no longer my area of expertise. Um, I know it was the site of one of the worst mining accidents in the history of Nevada. And that and that sits where the miner's cabin is. Mm -hmm. And the miner's cabin was an area where when they were bringing up the bodies, that's where they were putting them. So it's, it's you know, no wonder that it's haunted. Fair. Debbie, what led you to a paranormal career? Um, well, I worked for the state of Nevada for about 14 years, and they were shutting our agency down, and everyone was scrambling to look for a job. And um, history has always been a love of mine, and I've been going up to Virginia City since I was a little girl. And I started kind of, I had been kind of getting into the paranormal a little bit more. And I thought, I'm going to go take a ghost tour in Virginia City because for sure they have to have one, right? And to my surprise, there was not one. And I thought, you know, this is, I could do this. And so 15 years later, I'm still doing ghost tours in Virginia City. What has been the public reaction from back then when you started it? to where it is today because as somebody who runs my own ghost tour in my community at the local museum i know it went from getting you know we were lucky to get five maybe 10 people a tour and now our groups are 70 to 80 a tour um when we first started we did about a my me and my um, business partner tom we took about a year to research everything because you can't believe everything you read online about Virginia City. And we also wanted to investigate the locations ourselves. Um, when we first started, nobody wanted to talk about the ghosts up there. Except for one person. And hopefully you guys have heard of her. I call her the um, haunted, haunted first lady of Nevada, Janice Oberding. She's written several books. Um, she knew all about the hauntings and I went and talked to her. And so she tipped me off of where to go to and who to talk to. And it took a, about a year for people to really start opening up about their ghost stories there. You go up there today, everybody's talking about their, their ghost stories. Every building you go into, they're going to tell you about a ghost story they have in that building. So the town very much really welcomes it in now. Um, our tours, you know, we started off having tons of people on the tour. Now we don't have a ton of people on tour because there's so much for people to do now in that area that there wasn't before, which I think is amazing. You know, there's so many choices. Yeah. I want to ask you, because I'm very curious about this. When you approached the town and said, Hey, I would like to start off a ghost tour, you know, and find the spirits and hauntings regarding this. What was their reaction to this? They what was laughed. did they, they and but how did you convince them? Because I know our local museum here, and that's the only reference point I have. You know, they were like, Well, we, we think it's haunted, we're not sure, but you know, if you think you could bring people in, let's why not go for it? How did you know? How did they you you transform them into believers? I think when they started seeing me walk around with large groups of people every weekend and, you know, keeping up old buildings, like those buildings are all from the 1800s. It's extremely expensive to upkeep those buildings. And so the idea that, hey, people may be willing to pay me to let them come in and investigate my building, which would help with the, with the upkeep of it. That's amazing. And so People started, you know, and I think, too, people thought, oh, they're going to call me crazy if I have a ghost story to tell. And when I saw the people that were interested in hearing the ghost stories and realized, no, we're not going to call you crazy, then they were more okay talking about it. That had to feel pretty good where you could give them that little told you so. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, it, it, it's so good because I remember one year, Um, this was when Ghost Hunters was still on the air, like the original Ghost Hunters. And they were doing a contest looking for the most haunted town in America. 
So I wrote up the whole essay, sent in some pictures I had taken, and we made it to the top three where all of America got to vote. Oh, wow. And the campaign that we, we had news coverage and radio coverage and newspapers, everything up there. And I think when people really saw that, they were like, wow, we're literally getting global coverage now for this town. Yeah, that people started taking a look a little, little bit differently at ghost stories then. Well, I mean, you can thank the ghosts for sticking around for that. <laughs> yeah, yep, definitely. I know this may sound like a silly question to a number of people. And Merle, I'm sorry for overstepping you here for a, a minute or two. How long did it take for you to build bonds with the ghosts that you were there for their best intentions, that you were there to help raise money? Because that's one thing I did. Like, like before every tour, I go in and I remind the ghosts in our buildings, hey, guys, we have a tour tonight. There's going to be people walking through here. And we want to make sure that you're around because this is how we keep your home safe. This is mm -hmm. how we are able to help the museum, you know, fund their ways in order to, to, uh, you know, keep your buildings and your stories alive. And the ghosts seem to react to that. So how long did it actually take you to build those bonds and relationships with ghosts? As funny as that sounds. I don't think it took us very long at all. Now we we're an outdoor walking tour. So we don't go inside locations. We walk around town. All the spots we stop at are still known for having a ghost hanging around there. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is our number one priority. And I am such a stickler for this on my tour is that you respect the spirits because we're in their house. And I, I'd like to believe that they recognize that and that's why they come out for us as often as they do. I mean, I've had one spirit tell an entire group to F off oh, Wow! when they were giving me crap. Wow. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> Peter's got my back. <laughs> so I, I think they recognize that, you know, I think they do too. And Merle, you've had encounters with that as well. I have like when, when I go to my locations to investigate or to the historic sites, because because my group, our, our little slogan we have is history has a voice and we want to listen. And our goal and, and mandate is to preserve heritage and try and tell the story of the heritage before it's gone. And why not do that with a little bit of ghosts in there, too? But what I like to do when I go to these locations is I like to go in with a curator or whomever owns the property and introduce me to the ghosts in the place because in the old days we'd just go in and at nighttime and be like talk to us bro like you know but when you first start and stuff you really don't know what you're doing and, and now it's a it's a respect game and i find since we do the like go in with respect a lot more um we get a lot more answers we get a lot more communication versus the the f off and all that sort of stuff Yeah, it's amazing how it it seems to change the attitude and perception. In in the, your tours around Virginia City, Debbie, do you find that the spirits like the tour? Do you have spirits that don't like the tour? Um, I like to think that they do like the tour. Uh, the one thing, you know, I mean, we obviously can't guarantee activity on every single tour. I'd be as rich as Zach Bagans if I could do that. Um, but we don't treat them like they're circus animals. They're not mm -hmm. there to perform for our entertainment. So I, if they're not wanting to come out and they're not wanting to do thing on, on one certain night, I always make sure and say, you know what, that's okay. Hopefully we'll talk to you next time we're here. Cause I know I don't feel like talking to people every single night of my life either. Um, so I think they do like us now. There are some spirits that are not so nice because the truth is, if you were a douchebag in life, you're going to be one in death. That's not going to change, right? 100%. So we have like the Washoe Club has some spirits that can be a little testy sometimes. And if they don't want you up there, they're going to let you know they don't want you up there. What sorts of activity happens at the Washoe Club or what have you experienced there? Absolutely every type of experience you can imagine will happen at the Washoe Club. I have seen objects move. I've had handprints show up on my pants. Um, I've seen shadow figures. We've heard disembodied voices. Um, the only thing that is not there 
are demons. There are no demons in Virginia City whatsoever. Um, but yeah, every kind of paranormal experience you can imagine has happened at the Washoe Club. And and what makes that place so haunted? You know, that's a really good question. Um, it's one of the few buildings that survived the Great Fire of 1875. So it's been around since 1862. It's seen a lot. Um, there was an explosion that happened in there. There's been people that have died in that building over the years. Um, there's just so much history. And whatever for whatever reasons, the spirits are just, they that are there, they just want to stay there. It's probably very familiar to them since it survived the fire and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. What was it used for over the years? Like, what was the Washoe Club? Um, it's been used as a lot of things. The downstairs has pretty much always been a saloon. The upstairs has been doctor's offices, uh, you know, lawyer's offices, that kind of thing. And then in 1876 is when the Millionaire's Club moved in there. And they took over the top two floors. And for the rest of the time, you know, until the Comstock basically dwindled down, it was the Millionaire's Club. And basically, you had to be a millionaire in order to go up there. Um, and then in like the 1980s, early 80s, it was uh, apartments for rent. But there was like no plumbing, you know, no electricity, that kind of thing up there. So their fire alarm was an, a living person. <laughs> Every night, one person volunteered to stay awake and walk the hallways all night long in case a fire broke out. Wow. We have two and a half minutes to go before we have to go to break at the bottom of the hour. It's Ghost of the Great White North with our main man, Merle, and Debbie Bender from Virginia City. Debbie, when you take people on the tour, how big are your tours? We usually try to cap it at about 25 people. Um, we've obviously had more on private groups. We'll take as many people as you want if it's a private group but i've noticed 25 seems to be about the right amount of people that's awesome that's awesome and how much does it cost it's 20 dollars per person cash only oh yes the old cash only i know what that's like, yep. I know what that's like. just makes it very easy much easier to do that how do people find the tour you know how long is it how do they get a hold of you to book a, a time um, they can go to our website, virginiacityghosttours.com. We have a calendar on there of our when we're offering the tours, and they can fill out a little form to send in a request for that night. Um, and as far as people finding us, honestly, it's 15 years. It's been word of mouth. We've, you know, we've been on Ghost Adventures three times. That helps a lot spreading the word. Uh, but basically, just word of mouth is how they hear about us. That's awesome. How much fun do you have doing this? I have an amazing time doing this. I get to meet some of the most incredible people from all over the world at my job. Where's the furthest they've traveled from? Australia. Fair. And you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see us next month. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be good. And how long is the tour? It's about an hour outdoor walking tour. Sweet. Okay. And Dave, I think uh, I've, I've been getting some messages from some of the people coming to Reno saying how excited they are to do this tour. And they've been looking forward to hearing about the tour tonight. Nice. Yeah. Where um, where would you say is the most haunted location in Virginia City? If you had to say um, one that makes you a little apprehensive. There's none that make me apprehensive. I would say... The Washoe Club definitely is up there. Um, the Knights of Pythias building is another one that unfortunately is not open to the public. Um, and then uh, Mackey Mansion is also another one that's really great. Um, I'm going to be going to Mackey Mansion when I'm there. I'm staying two nights at Silver Queen and then uh, two nights at the Goldfield. And, I'm, and I reserve some time at Mackey Mansion. Is there anything specifically that like people can do there to interact with the ghosts um there's a little girl spirit that likes to play around upstairs and she can be very very interactive okay and um there's also a spirit that used to hang around the gazebo i haven't been there you know down there and try to contact him in a while so i don't know if he's still hanging around 
Okay. I think we lost Dave. Uh oh. Yeah. He's a. Uh... Yeah, I know, right? Filth, where'd he go? I can hear your cat. No? That's all right. Dirty Filth's taking over. <laughs> it's a mutiny, everybody. It's now uh -oh. spaced out Rudy with Dirty Filth. I know, Special right? guest star Merle. <laughs> and the cat. We love the cat. And, and Blob. Yeah. So I'm not sure if we're going to break or what. So I'll just do my best, Dave, here. Remember, our radio side can't hear you, but our YouTube and other playlist sides can hear you. Yep. So I think... I think we're in okay to swear territory, basically. <laughs> but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna push. I'm not risking it. I'm not risking it either. No. So and I'm not. We we might be on break. I don't know. I, I think, think we so. maybe are. Yeah, it's like. So I I think we got about like five minutes. You can pet the cat, feed the dog. Yeah. Make a peanut butter banana sandwich. Whatever you need, right? Um, so where's the chat room? Is everyone on the chat room on YouTube? Because I, yeah, I don't get to see it. It's on YouTube. It's on the uh, the YouTube. Uh, hold on one sec. Yes, it's if you go to the spaced out radio at YouTube, it's on okay. there. It should be one of the live chats, and you can jump in there if you have a YouTube thing and yell at all the weirdos in there. Blob for mayor. Oh, I don't know. Do we really need a cat being a mayor? Especially one that's about 9,000 years old. She's like, what's on the docket for today, everybody? Oh, I'm going to sleep. All right. Cats. So I just got a message from Dave. His uh, <laughs> his power went out. So it's the three of us, guys. It's the three of us. Oh, no. Well, well, oh, let's, boy. Let's do our best, Dave. Dirty filth. Okay. Well. I think we go for like till six minutes or 36 is we're back. And then, then that's no more swearing time. <laughs> we just so. won't swear. We'll keep a G maybe PG. Yeah. Okay. Blob mm -hmm. pile of my cartoons. They're unbelievable. Complete disrespect. Sorry. I'll allow it. Hey Debbie, how far is um, Carson city from Virginia city? Um, About. If you if you are good at driving a winding mountain road, maybe about twenty minutes. That's not bad at all. You know where you should really try and check out when you come down here is the Nevada State Prison. That's um I've been trying to uh to make a little list of all the places I want to go to. I'm there for four nights. You want to uh, contact them now though. Okay. That'd be really important. And they do like group tours there. They they do. I know that they're almost sold out for the season for their tours. Um, but there's a possibility. I mean, you yeah, you might be able to arrange, you know, some kind of investigation or whatever they have going on. But definitely give them a call and see if you can make some kind of arrangements because that place is pretty incredible. What kind of hauntings happen there? I've seen it on a lot of the shows. Have you have you experienced anything at the Nevada State Prison? I haven't. I haven't had a chance to go down there yet, but Janice, I know Janice had an amazing seance that she did down there. And then, you know, I know uh, Susan Bernard, who's in charge of the program down there and the story she's been telling and her and Michelle LeBaire and the evidence they've catched is just incredible. That's awesome. I've been, I've been having Virginia City on my bucket list for years now. I was going to go pre-COVID, but then COVID happened. <laughs> And um, yeah, but, but yeah, no, I am. I'm really. What was for, for our listeners? What was the Millionaires Club at the Wash Hill? So it was basically a club for rich men um, to go up. They had billiard tables in there. They would supposedly had all night poker games, and it was just a men's club. Just a fun place. They to could hang. go. Yeah, they could go hang out and be rich for you know the day. Oh, we all wish, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. And um, I'm just trying to think of all the locations because I'm excited to stay to Silver Queen. So I so I booked the room Zach Baggins slept in. Room 11? That's the one. The That I, is I, Rosie's room. Yeah. That's the one. Now, what can you tell me about Rosie's room and what do I have to... Um, I'm bringing my gear. I'm, I'm packing light. I'm, it's a solo trip I'm, I'm doing, going down there by myself. With a handful okay. of gear. So 
bring her a rose or a flower of some kind. Okay. Um, she's a really, really sweet spirit. Really, really sweet. Um, yeah, just, you know, bring her a rose and then, you know, I, she's really good about interacting. She, she loves to take care of the men that are sleeping in her room. She's been known to like tuck you in at night, make sure you're all covered and all, awesome. all comfy. <laughs> good. And what is the story on Rosie? Like, what's the stories of the Silver Queen Hotel? Because I know just seeing it on the shows and that, it seems like it's it's pretty haunted. It is. I mean, Rosie's really the biggest spirit that haunts there. Um, there's some stories about some kids, supposedly, but I I don't think those are real accurate. Um, so Rosie was a prostitute. Mm -hmm. And she found herself alone and pregnant. And she unfortunately took the option of ending her life to solve the problem. Hey, oh, I that's... sort of cut in. I think we're going to, we're kind of around to the, like back to live. <laughs> okay. I think. I think it's about 36. So anyways, I, uh, Dave has no buttons because his powers. I was, I think we've been live the whole time. <laughs> okay. I don't know how it works. If it just goes to like pre-commercial cause he, he'll probably have to edit it or something. So fair. Good job, okay. Dave. Yeah, Dave. You do a lot of work, love you, buddy. Power going out. Whose power goes out, right? Um, but no. So, so yeah, we're we're back to where when it would be live. So let's go back to the Silver Queen Hotel. Is that an original building? In Virginia City. Eighteen seventy six. Eighteen seventy six. And is it yes. has it always been a hotel? Um. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, not as big as it is right now, of course, before the fire. I don't think the building was that big. It was like one, maybe one or two stories before the fire. Okay. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm Rosie's room. And then, so she takes care of you and you bring her Rose. And yep. Do people see her or do they just sense her and feel her like possibly tucking you in and, and that sort of thing? I've never heard anyone who's actually seen her. It's more feeling her. Um, she loves to interact with you, like with a K2 meter. Um, and then like you can, some people say they feel like her sitting on the edge of the bed mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. So it's more that kind of thing. Yeah. That, that'll, that'll creep me out. That's for sure. <laughs> um, a question I had for you was, I know a lot of people go to the Washoe, they, they go to Mackey Mansion, they go to the Silver Queen in the theater but where are some more off the beaten path haunts in virginia city that not as many people would think to go to saint mary's art center saint mary's art center and and what are that what is the history and what happens there so saint mary's art center used to be the hospital built in the 1800s it was uh run by the daughters of charity and it was the only hospital up there and it has quite a few spirits there um hopefully if you're able to go down there during the day paula will be able to give you a tour of that place because the spirits absolutely love her there oh that's cool um, a lot of history father meineke was the priest who turned it into an art center in the 1960s and he so they tell us took his own life but okay. he's actually buried in consecrated ground in the Catholic cemetery and did receive last rites. Um, but he put his life's blood into St. Mary's Art Center up there. And it's a beautiful, beautiful building. Hmm. That, that'll be fun. And you said when you started, you started doing these tours, you did a lot of research. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, myth versus fact, I would assume. And... How many of the stories in Virginia City have you found being fabricated or more embellished? Where you kind of had to like debunk it in a sense. I think probably Julia Bulette's a really good example of that. Um, she was a very well-known prostitute. And over the years, her story now, if you look her up online, she was the madam of Julia's palace and dripping in furs and diamonds and all that stuff. No, she was a middle-class prostitute that died in debt. Um, she had a tiny little, what they called a crib back then on the corner of D and Union Street. Um, she was, you know, a, probably a very, very nice person. And she took, whenever there was an at mining accident or something, she was 
on the scene helping to take care of the men. But she mm-hmm. was a smart businesswoman. Those were her customers she was taking care of. Yeah, fair. She was also, yeah. So she was pretty she was pretty smart that way. Um, she was a volunteer fire per fire person. But for her, you know, the legend of her is greater than the actual life of her. Mm. And that seems to happen in these towns because the town up here, they the the madam, the madam, she was said to be laughs and luxury and all that, but really middle aged or middle class woman. Yeah. Um, just businesswoman. Yeah, exactly. And I do, you know, there, you know, we talk about a lot of legends on our tour. Mm -hmm. And I am a firm believer that, you know, in every legend, there's going to be that kernel of truth that Mm -hmm. kind of sparks it. And I think what sparked the legends of Julia Billette that made her larger than life is that she was so well loved in that town that when she died, um, her funeral procession that day is one of the only days that every single bar shut down in that town. So everyone could attend. Wow. Yeah. She's important. And where does it, does she haunt the areas? I believe she does. I believe that, you know, you can hear her footsteps walking around on the boardwalk. And I think she's, she's still hanging around Virginia city. Hmm. And uh, what, you said earlier that you, when you were doing a tour, you had a ghost tell you to F off. Yes. Where? I need to know this location. <laughs> <laughs> so I I had a tour one night with a group. It was a private tour with a group of people. And um, they had enjoyed spirits of a different kind mm-hmm. a lot before the tour started. Right. And they were not being very respectful to the spirits when we tried to contact them. And so we got behind the courthouse where someone, where Peter Larkin was hung. And I let people interact with Peter there. And because he can be very talkative some nights. And so before I did that, I said, I'm going to warn you one last time. You need to be respectful to these spirits. This is our number one priority here. Mm-hmm. So I put the first person so he could ask Peter a question. And of course, he does not ask him a very respectful question. And I had, my sb7 out and clear crystal clear through the sb7 is f you to this person and they all shut up for the rest of the night <laughs> i was sure like they did. <laughs> i am um, i have a funny story about because i did tours at a, a famous hotel out here as well um and these people came in on mushrooms oh no and we didn't it was starting to like we didn't know <laughs> when we started the tour, I guess they must have did it in the parking lot or shortly before. And um, halfway through the tour, they were they're messed up. But I don't know if it was the, the mushrooms or the ghosts being really upset at them because they said that they felt go like being pushed. And our SB seven and eleven, they were swearing. They the the energy was just upset. And like when we do the tours up here, I, I'm like. We don't mix spirit with spirit and mm-hmm. for uh, their safety and, and the, the respect of, of the ghosts per se. Yeah. But. Yeah. Virginia city is, it's hard. I mean, we, we don't allow people who are overly intoxicated to take the tour, mm-hmm. but we don't always see them downing their shots before they take the tour. <laughs> and, and Virginia city is a party town and people are up there to have a good time. So we let people bring drinks with them as long as, you know, they keep themselves under control. That's fine. And they're not disrupting anyone else. That's why I have Tom is Tom is my security guy because he can kick somebody off the tour and nobody else on the tour will know that that person's been kicked off until it's all of a sudden quiet. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's that's good that you have someone coming out out to do that. Yeah. Um, On your tour, what what would be the scariest thing that's ever happened? in paranormal wise like to a guest um gosh we you know the biggest thing is is pictures that people are taking Mm -hmm. um we've had people take some really really incredible pictures on the tour um and it's always nice like when one of the spirits that we try to contact kind of focuses on one person on the tour and then you know is and getting they're like answering their questions and 
really interacting with them. You know, it's really pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, do you guys do things for Halloween? Like, do you do tours? We, yeah, we do our regular tours on Halloween. We used to do um, special Halloween tours where we actually went inside locations. But again, trying to make sure that everyone is sober on the tour is really hard. And I will not bring an intoxicated person into an historic building. No. That's... So we decided to stop doing that. Do they do investigating tours there? Like where people will bring you into the buildings? Like, I mean, like, are all the, are a lot of the buildings open to having investigators come in? Um, it really depends on the building. Most of them are usually just, uh, now, you know, the Washoe Club, of course, you can rent out that building for the entire night. I think it's $400 plus a membership. Um, so you can do an invest, you can set up an investigation in the Washoe Club almost any night you want to. Um, the other buildings, it's usually when it's more of a controlled environment, like a Paracon or something. Soul Circle Paranormal puts on two Paracons in Virginia City every year. And it's an amazing, amazing group. They, you know, keep participation very low. And they usually have Shane Pittman. Um, he, we, he was on the Holzer Files. Yeah. At, one of their lead investigators and he's an amazing person. So a lot of the buildings will, will you can get into if you go through one of those events. Uh, I can't wait to be there, man. Um, May I ask you, a question? Yes. Are there any animal spirits or anything similar to that, that you yeah. know of? In It's funny you should say that because the only Besides a shadow figure, the only full-bodied apparition I have seen in Virginia City is a dog. And I was at the Silver Queen. And I was sitting at the one of the back tables with the owner, Connie, and I was helping her do some stuff to get ready for things. And I see her dog walk in and go to the back like he normally does. And I see this other dog follow right behind him. I was like, oh, Connie, you got another dog. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, the dog that just followed yours. And she's like, there was only my dog there. And I can tell you the, the color of the collar this dog had on. It was just, it was crystal clear. So, yep, I do think there are definitely spirit animals up there. I have actually a spirit animal thank story. You. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Filth. I just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> um, I actually have a spirit ghost interact or a dog, or not dog, it was a pig, ghost pig interaction. Was that wow. a, was that a old historic gold rush town? And I was just walking down the middle of um, the road. No one was around. And um, I walked by the old butcher shop. And I had my audio recorder going. I was literally just yapping to myself. And um, I go back and play my audio that night. And I literally heard pigs oinking the entire time. Wow. While, while I was standing in front of the, um, the, uh, the old butcher shop. So that's kind of weird. So I guess... This human spirit, so there's clearly animal spirits out there, too. Yeah, there's um, a spirit of a little girl at the visitor center, and a lot of people believe she has a ghostly cat that she plays with. So, yeah, there's definitely, I think, spirit animals that are hanging around. I know one of the buildings Dave does during for his tour, there's a little girl there that, that plays with a cat. Oh. And, um, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. And, and, like, there's a lot of, like, the the ghost hunting tools now cater to like trying to communicate with, with child spirits too, like the boo buddy mm -hmm. and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I know Dave wanted, wanted to talk about as well, all the paranormal teams that come through Virginia city. Cause there's probably no shortage of them. Yeah. Um, do they, are, are they all ethical? Like, like, or do they just wild west ghost hunting style? You know, I, this is going to sound really sad. I know I, I do my best to stay away from paranormal teams because I've been um, taken advantage of so much by them in the past. And a lot of times there's so much drama that goes on with them that I just have a tendency to stay away from groups. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Virginia City gets a lot more of the people who have never done it before and think that it's supposed to be like what it is on TV. And we all know it's never like what it is on TV. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's always groups that go around going, oh my God, there's demons here and there's demons there. And oh, I got God. touched and look at this. And uh, I was possessed and a ghost followed me home. And, you know, I, I that's one of the questions I always get asked on the tour is, are the ghosts going to follow me home? And I said, I've been doing this for 15 years. If the ghosts follow people home, we would have no ghosts left here. <laughs> that's so fair. They're not gonna. No, no, that's true. Um, on a side note, hey, Felth, Dave wants you to give him a call because his power's still out. Calling Dave right now. Copy that. 1 800 Dave. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I noticed that too. Like, like up here, there'll be like older, cool historic locations that you. I don't want to say discover because they've been here for over a hundred years, but like you give a new life to with tours, telling the history, doing little ghost hunts to keep them alive. And then they're just flooded. And then the drama ensues. Yep. Yep. Do teens ever get asked to leave up there? Um, I know of a few teams that are not welcome back in some of the buildings. Mm -hmm. Um, but usually, I mean, the sad thing is, and is usually what will happen is instead of telling that one particular team, we don't want you back here, they shut the building off to everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's what really hurts the town a lot, you know, and it hurts all of us that want to enjoy the history of that building and the stories that it holds. Yeah. And I totally agree with you because it's, 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 what I like to do, I know people always talk about para unity and all that sort of stuff, but like, yeah. how cool would it be for like team A to go to the wash hoe, do their complete investigation, and then team B and C go on different nights, and then you all collectively get together and try and share your evidence mm -hmm. and correlate. Like, if team A and C got the same EVP from the same voice, like the same person, yep. that's what's cool. And again, that's all. Doc that's what I'm. I'm. I'm a nerd with it, like doc documenting instead of just exposing the paranormal. Oh, absolutely. I, and um, Janice Oberding, I think, put it really well one time when people were asking her about para unity, and she said the problem with para unity is you are you are only as strong as your weakest link. Unfortunately, true. Yeah. So. We all need to be better. <laughs> <laughs> and now, yeah. you know, the flip side of that is we've had some absolutely amazing groups that come through there and they come back every year mm -hmm. and they find great evidence, you know, and they're extremely respectful to the building. And, you know, and that's the, that's the good part about it and getting to meet those people. Um, I last weekend finally got to meet um, the people from Corn Paranormal. Nice. And what wonderful people they were so it's always exciting when you do get to because there are a lot of really good paranormal investigators out there and it's exciting when you get to meet them yeah last month um we interviewed ghost club paranormal and um they were in virginia city i think last year and i think they're going there again this next month as well and they all they say how great it is and they're all about the history and preservation as well yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, the unfortunate thing is I get a lot of um, messages from paranormal groups saying, hey, can you get us into this location or that location? And I'm like, I don't know you. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do that. No, that's fair. And that and that's that's the good way to do it. Oh, look who's back. Yes, I am back. I am very much back. Uh, just so you guys know, the power went out here. Um, a tree landed on the uh, power line so i don't know how much longer i'm going to have power uh but it could be on for good now <laughs> but um we're just going to continue we'll take a break in five minutes guys okay Sounds good. and thank, thank you uh for for covering that um but uh sorry about that guys i i didn't expect that to happen that's for sure all good dave we were just on um, talking about para unity and all the different teams coming through the locations and respect and all that so the stuff you well, like to talk about yeah that leads me to a question do you ever have people who try and sneak into buildings and do their own thing or try to clear spirits <laughs> from from the area oh all the time that was the all next the time yeah <laughs> i'm you know i'm after 15 years i i, I will fully admit i'm a little bit jaded <laughs> um 
everyone and their uncle is a psychic. And I know that there are people who <laughs> probably really are, but not that many people. No. And when you, you know, we get people come on the tour that are like, oh, we're psychic. We're going to, you know, clear the spirits of this building. I just kind of laugh and say, okay, because I know they can't. I don't believe that we as humans have the ability to tell somebody else a spirit. You need to move on now. You know, I mean, I think that's their choice and they're there for a reason. But yes, we do get a lot of people that try to cleanse the building. It goes with what you said earlier, too, like, because I'm on the same page with you 100%. If a person was a bit of a not a nice person in the in living, they're probably going to be the same when they're dead. Yeah. And if a person doesn't want to leave their house or where they lived or where they had fun or whatever, they ain't going to leave. Exactly. Just because you tell them to go, go to the light, you know? Yeah. Yep. Um, what if they don't want to go to light? What if they just want to be part of the tours, right? <laughs> Maybe they love watching all the tourists walking around all day long. I know if I was a ghost, I would absolutely be a a troll to people. <laughs> <laughs> right? So would I. <laughs> yeah, no. And that sucks people that people do that stuff. Because, yeah, everyone will be like, okay, show them your gift. We're a family of psychics. And I don't mean to sound like, like, an, like an arse like that. But but that's more often than not what mm-hmm. happens. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of the buildings will have special rules, like, you know, no Ouija boards. Yeah. And, you know, to me, Ouija boards are a tool just like they are for anything else, if you know how to use one properly. I but if a building an... says no Ouija boards, you got to respect that. 100%. And I call it an analog spirit box. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yep. And because it's exactly what it is. If you're using a spirit box, a candle, a flashlight, an ovulus, you're, you're it's a tool. Yeah. And and none of them, unfortunately, maybe may Go Stop will invent one this year or next year, if they're listening, invent a device that has caller ID. <laughs> so we know if, <laughs> if we're talking to Satan himself or Aunt Edna, we need to know. <laughs> exactly. You got to watch out for that evil Aunt Edna every time, man. Every time. 60%. Every time. She's not baking chocolate chip cookies. She's getting ready to throw some hot rocks at you. That's for sure. <laughs> With the people who are, are you know, kind of acting out of the ordinary on the tour, how, have you ever had to kick people off? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mostly because they were just... Um overly intoxicated and being really disruptive but that's what i have a security guy for he does that for me yeah we we've had to do that uh quite a bit is in where i live there's not a lot of entertainment so people think they'll uh, go juice it up before the tour and Mm -hmm. or or, uh, you know smoke a little bit too much hippie lettuce and it's just to the point where you know, we have to think about safety because I think a lot of people like ours is a little bit different than yours. We actually take people inside buildings and, and teach them about paranormal investigation. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when people are out there, they don't understand, like they're coming for the entertainment value, but they don't really understand that there is a a danger to all of this. Oh, absolutely. And and it's a, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different because, you know, we're not only having to worry about their safety, but we have to worry about other people's safety as well. Yep. Yep. That's why we stopped. Um, like I was saying earlier on Halloween, we used to take people inside a few locations, but no matter how many times we had people click the little button that says, I agree, I will not drink before or after or during the tour. We still had people do that. And um, there was too many times I had to refuse letting people in to a location. And so I just thought, you know, this is not worth it anymore. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, Uh, like we, we actually, we have a pretty good system where we're set up where um, we have, they have to go through about three or four people before they're paid. And if they have any odor of alcohol or, or, uh, or marijuana or anything, we just, we have to just say tonight's not your night. Because yeah. they don't understand the danger. They're out for fun. Right. Now, we do allow people to dr- to bring drinks with them on the tour. Because it's, it's for the city. It's hard. One second, guys. We're going to go to break here. 
at Spaced Out Radio. Give these guys a break. We'll be right back. This is Spaced Out Radio with hopes Dave Scott. All right, to our YouTube audience, that um, that little power outage cost me uh, quite a bit of time because now I, I can't send... Uh, I, I'm going to have to do a bunch of editing and everything. So after we are done the next hour, we're going to call it the night for tonight. And because uh, I have to get to work and try and make a show out of what's here. And that's going to take me extra long. So there, uh, we're just going to end it after two hours tonight uh, after Ghost of the Great White North. I do apologize, but uh, apparently that tree just had to fall down on the power lines and go from there. So um unfortunately it'll be a shortened show tonight but that's okay we'll make it through the next hour and have some fun here with stone cold steve merlston and uh debbie bender from belt bats in the belfry i think we we powered through dave we did it we did it. Managed right. not to swear it was good yeah, I- and and dirty filth uh uh, we're just going to move over to you here for a minute because that's a nice, blo- that's some good blobbing. Another time. blob there. Holy. Get a double dose of blob. Yeah. Just vibrating again. I forgot my, um, my, my water upstairs. I'll be right back, guys. <clears throat> Probably like, like a, like a seltzer water, like something I know grandpa drinks because he is grandpa Dave now. I'm going to go grab some water, too, so I'll be right back. Sounds good. Morley, you going to go for a saunter? No, I uh, I have my my water that's not seltzered, seltzered. So I have flat water, and I got a, a weird-tasting Coca-Cola. It's that new Coke that's out. It tastes like raspberries. It's weird. Raspberry. Weird. Uh, one of my buddies brought over. I'm just doing the tiles for the floor at the CIA headquarters. That's why they look weird. But one like of my that. friends brought over. Uh, what the hell was it? Blackberry Crown Royal for when we were rolling dice the other weekend. Holy, this stuff just shouldn't be allowed. I tell you, Merle. I like the the apple flavored one. I didn't know if I need to lift my pinky up when I was drinking that stuff. But you do. It's, you do. it's, it's a yeah. sophisticated rye. Yeah. You know what I was upset about? Because I went and I, Watson got one. And I go, okay, Watson, I'll, I'll scoop one for the next one. But didn't come with a bag. Remember Crown Royal used to always come with a bag. You need the bag. And that, that's And that's what you put your dice in. It's a thing. Especially you if you it. get a dice addiction problem like poor Watson. Just slandering him on air. Yeah, he's probably listening to classic Watson. Yeah, I'm gonna go find his character sheet and rip it apart. Your character suddenly died. Not quite a Sherlock move if he can't find it, right, Watson? See what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's no funny, Mrs. Dad. Filth, and all the all the cousins. They all they're all big Sherlock Holmes fans, and each each of them are named after one of them. She's the Mrs. Is, Moriarty, of course, but nonetheless, when they all get together, the Wicked Sisters, they all—it's all this Sherlock Holmes fan fiction stuff they used to write. Anyways, I'm rambling away here. It's not important. This is totally not about ghosts. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's a it's a break. But no, I'm uh I'm super stoked for Reno. But I'm I'm super super stoked for uh, Virginia City. I've been excited uh, for Debbie to come on the show to to hear about all these. These places up there or down there, I guess. Now, did you set up any investigations while you're there yet? Um, so the Gold Hill Hotel is giving me the okay to have the hotel for the night to investigate. And I have to email back Mackie Mansion. It's okay. just gonna be me. Um, hopeful fingers crossed for, for like that no one else joins in on the tour. But if, if they do that, that's that's good too. Um and then I'm yeah two nights at the Silver Queen, but I'd really like to do the Wash Ho, but I don't know if uh, that's in the budget for for a solo investigator. <laughs> I don't know if the Wash Ho has. I mean, I won't know. 
Um, you're coming on my ghost tour, right? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. I can't make you promises, but we'll see what we can what we can find out for the Washoe. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I'll be there um, the 13th. I'll be there from the Sunday to the Thursday. Okay. Yeah. So I'm excited, man. Like, I've, I've Virginia said he's, like, seeing it on Ghost Adventures. And then a lot of the, like, I know that there's another team called Barrier Beyond that have been through... The, the Virginia city, like we had them on spaced out radio a couple months ago. And I've been every, cause I know that we talked to you or I talked to you a handful of months ago to have you come on the show, but every month I've been bringing on people that said they've been through Virginia city and kind of uh-huh. asking them questions. <laughs> so yeah. then Merle's good at his research. Absolutely. He's diligent. That's, <laughs> That's what I like about him. Yeah. And I, I like all the facts. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I do a lot. Like I, I have a YouTube channel, the the where we put up our videos of all the little haunts. But I am and Instagram, um, and Instagram too. Yeah, it, but I uh, I'm gonna do a solo investigative kind of POV video for this, in a sense, like a documentary of just going down in Virginia City. It'd be very low key. Nice. Yeah. And then rent a car from Reno, and we'll be good. You'll Watch probably... out for the wild horses driving up Geiger. Okay, fair. <laughs> That'll make good B roll. <laughs> Earl's going to rent a nice Tesla, nice electric vehicle that has like yeah. a quarter battery left. I had to drive one at work the other day. It was horrible. Oh, they're horrible. <laughs> Let's continue on here on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you for joining us. A weird one tonight. Coming back from the power outage. Not much can knock me down. Pretty tough that way. But I could tell you, a power outage will do it every time. We got Merle. We got Debbie Bender from Bats of the Belfry. Virginia City Ghosts is what we are talking about. Dirty Filth and Blobbage are here. And we're always happy when Blob makes an appearance. So thank you, Blob. Good old Blob. Debbie, I want to ask you, have you ever had any of the spirits come out during the tour and physically assault anybody? Assault? No, no. Um, We've had people feel like the hand on their shoulder kind of thing. Or, you know, ladies will have their hair messed with a little bit, but not assault. Uh, let's see here. How about touch people? End up spirit yeah. uh, spirits um, being part of the room? Oh, yeah. We've had a lot of people that have been touched while they're on the tour. A lot. Do a lot of the people that go on the tour, do they use ghost gear, like audio recorders and that sorts of stuff? We do not allow anyone to videotape or record the tour. Um we get people that try to use sometimes, you know, some of those phone apps and stuff. And I ask them to please turn it off because when you're trying to tell a story, it can get really disruptive. Fair. What's the excitement people have about, about this? Is it, you know, cause I, I, I think it's great. I, uh, and I'm going to try and make it uh, down there when, when we go down there. Uh, cause I haven't been to Virginia city since literally 1990. And the cool part about it is I'm sure the buildings haven't changed. Nothing's probably changed. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. But what's the excitement for people when they're coming there for the first time? Do they think they're going to meet a ghost or are they historians? What do you think? It's actually kind of a mixture of both. We get a lot of people that are just really into the history and don't care so much about the ghost stories. Um, And then we got a lot of people that, you know, they've seen the ghost shows on TV and they really want to come and, um, and, they may not have an actual experience, but they're just happy to be, you know, walking around the town and hearing all those ghost stories and seeing some of those places. I could totally see that. Yeah. Totally see that. Have you ever asked any of the spirits where they're hiding their gold? Yes, and they won't tell me. And I think yeah. after 15 years, they should tell me. And there's a lot of stories about gold being hidden around Virginia City. I can imagine. <laughs> See, we have that we have that issue at our museum too, 
is when we when we ask where the gold is, they they never tell us. Like literally, our spirits, the minute we bring up the G word, they they disappear. They're like, I'm out, I'm gone. <laughs> That, that's enough. You know, you had your chance, but uh, I'm out. It, it's the weirdest thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely the weirdest thing. Yeah. No. Um. Damn, Dave. I, I lost my question here. But no, I was going to ask you. Have you ever been followed by a spirit? You mean like followed journey? home? Yeah, followed home. No, I don't believe that they do that. No. And yeah, the big reason is, is if they've been haunting a location for 150 years, what is so fascinating and so interesting about me that they're going to follow me home after all that time? Um, I think the reason people think spirits follow them home is because I think when you when you do a ghost tour enough times or, you know, go into a haunted location enough times, you start to be able to kind of pick things up a little bit. And I think they go back home and they start seeing stuff that they can't explain. And they think a ghost followed them home, but it's actually been a ghost that's been there the whole time. They just didn't notice. Have you ever had troubles with, you know, the plethora of psychic people out there who are trying to remove the ghosts from the area? Oh, yeah, from absolutely. And, and how do you deal with them? I just laugh. Um <laughs> And tell them to go ahead and try because I don't believe that they can. We actually had a situation at my museum where a dark witch came in and actually moved one of our, our most powerful spirits out of the building. And it's actually quite a sad story because she still, four years later, five years later, is still not back in that room. And, oh. and this is the type of the ghost. Her name is Mary. You know who I'm talking about there, Merle. Okay. She, she used to be a, a, she was forced into prostitution as a, as a young girl at, on the gold rush trail. And so up here, what would happen is they would kidnap uh, young girls in their teenage years or early twenties, and they would threaten them with their lives or their family's lives uh, by, um, by, uh, threatening to kill their families. So the girls would be forced in. And if the families came to look for them, they would hide the girls within the building or run them into the forest with their mouths tied. So they couldn't yell and scream and whatever it could be. And this spirit that we have named Mary, I used to be able to put two K2 meters on the ground and I would ask her to come stand in the middle. And both K2 meters would shoot up to red when she got there. And she used to actually allow our tour people to actually feel her. Hmm. And since this uh, lady took her out, we got her back to the property, but we haven't been able to get her back into the house. And so we actually did a thing this past weekend to try and cleanse the house from any dark magic that still might be in that house keeping her out of the room. So we've had to deal with that. I, and I know on our tour, the, the first ever since then, the first thing I ask would, before we start the tour, when all the people are gathered and we're getting them ready to go with the groups, well, I, I'll actually stand up and I'll say, who's my psychics in here? And, you know, oh. you'll get three or four, put their hands up. And I will say point blank, because um, I have permission from the museum as well. I said, if you try and cross any spirits over during this tour, you will be banned from this location for life. Yeah. Now, that, you know, that's, and it's a really good point that you bring up. I don't necessarily believe that we can make spirits go towards the light, but I think we can banish spirits from buildings, like bar them from coming back in. We, that happened to us at the Mackey Mansion. So I do believe people can do that. I just don't think we can tell spirits to cross over. Tell the Mackie Matchin story. Um, it's kind of funny. We uh, did an episode of The Dead Files. And I think we were the first place where, uh, you know, the psychic that's on the show, where she said we needed to have, we needed to have an exorcism there. 
And she's like, you have to have this done, you know, da, 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 da. And I was kind of like, okay, you know, so I just thought, well, you know, just to be safe. Cause there wasn't, there was kind of a spirit we thought might be not so nice outside, but in the building, we always had interactions with this little girl who was always playful, always really sweet. So I brought my friend Marlene in, um, who is a witch and does Native American practices. And she just kind of cleansed the building of any negativity kind of thing going on. And that October, we took our tour group inside the Mackey Mansion. And I had two of my people upstairs watching the group. And then I was downstairs. And we all had walkie-talkies just in case something happened. So upstairs where that little girl usually is, through the walkie-talkies comes this little girl's voice saying, where's my mommy? Help me find my mommy. And I was like, oh my God, what did we do? Did we banish somehow her mother from this house? That, and, you know, the theory was at that time that it could have been Mrs. Mackey and this was her daughter we were, act- we're, were interacting with. Um, so I brought Marlene back and I said, you need to get her back in this house right now. Because I was almost in tears thinking, what did we do to this little child spirit that she doesn't have her mommy anymore? So, yeah, I think we can, you know, bar spirits from locations, but just not cross them into the light. Damn. Hey. Can I go, Dave? Go I got a question. I got a good one. Yeah, go. You bring, go. Yeah, you, yeah, I'm going, man. You bring up the dead files. And uh, I want to know what it's like working with the TV production shows versus, like, just your average ghost hunter. Um, working with Dead Files was a really amazing experience. Steve Deshavi is probably one of the nicest guys you will ever meet. Um, and the psychic that's on the show, she was amazing. Um, we sat, we kept getting in trouble with the producers because she was so interested in hearing some of the stories. And so we kept talking. They're like, no, you can't say anything because you might say something you shouldn't be saying. No talking. And (laughs) I remember standing, taking a break and standing out on the front porch with her, which looks up kind of like this hill. And there's this big blue house that's on this hill. And we're just kind of standing there, just just me and her, no cameras, no nothing, just chit-chatting. And she looks at me, she's like, why do I keep seeing wounded miners coming down from that hill? And this is a really, really kind of obscure piece of Virginia history that you probably can't even find on the internet. I mean, it's just, it, you know, fifty back then, that Chapin house was used as a triage for a lot of the mining accidents. Oh, wow. And for her to pick that up. But I know a lot of people say these ghost shows are faked or whatever. I didn't notice anything being faked when I did it. I was on dead files twice. I noticed absolutely nothing being faked. Um, You know, doing ghost adventures, getting to meet the guys. That was always great. I didn't see them fake anything. I was there when they were getting the EVPs and stuff and, I don't know. You know, I mean, they were getting as just as good of evidence as any of, you know, the groups that come in there. And yeah, maybe a little over dramatized, but it's TV. It's supposed to be that way, right? Gotta turn it up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Did you so what when you're on set with these people and like you just said how you saw them get their EVPs, like you in real time, you see them obtain their evidence and and mm-hmm. and re and go through their EVPs. Now, did you experience anything while being on set? Um, the last time when I was with them, yeah, because we were in the Knights of Pythias building, and I remember we were upstairs in that place. has some crazy, crazy stuff that happens in there. Um, Zach kept hearing something, and he looked at me. He's like, Debbie, did you hear that? And I remember looking, I'm going, no, I, I'm not hearing anything. And then I started hearing stuff in the kitchen area and i was like nope i'm hearing something from over there and so then they went in that area and were yeah it was just started popping off like crazy i want to ask you in regards to not only television but other paranormal teams that show up there you know how do you know considering you're not going into buildings or anything like this how do other paranormal teams react to you uh the way you do your tour um you know our experiences is most paranormal teams don't want to take ghost tours because they think you know none of it 
is real. I'm sorry, my neighbors are killing themselves. I hope you can't hear any of this. Um, <laughs> and so we don't really get a whole lot of teams. And it's kind of sad to me too, because that also tells me they're not interested in the history. And I think you really need to know the history if you're going to go into a location. You know, if you're going to go to a town or something, you need to know everything you can about it. So I wish more paranormal teams would come on the tour. And like stuff like that makes me sad because I, I that's like that's what I do. I, I research the history before I even step foot in a location because I view that as a respect factor. I'd rather know who I'm talking to than assume or guess or call things out to talk to. And I, and I yeah. think the spirits know that as well. Like if you go in there to have a conversation with Tom, because you know, Tom lived there. It's better than saying, show yourself, bro, knock three times, you know, like it's, it's just a respect factor. Oh, absolutely. And I, and I think most teams, I don't know, maybe I'm just being cranky, but I think most teams should do their history and their research before they go bring out their phone apps and all that stuff to go, to get that scare. But I think a lot of teams, they just want to be scared and mm -hmm. have that jump factor or that, that YouTube like follow share. Right. Yep. Oh I, I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I see some of, you know, the, the headlines on some videos are like, you know, town's so scary. Nobody's there at nighttime. And it's like, um, we're always there at nighttime. Our tour is at nighttime. <laughs> yeah. Anything for the, the like, follow, subscribe. Yep. And I find no, and that's exactly it, Merle. I mean, I mean, how many times have we talked about the fact that that with uh, a lot of these paranormal teams out there, you know, they are there for, you know, they're like me. They're enthusiasts. They they go by the title ghost hunters or paranormal investigators, but realistically, they're enthusiasts for the scare factor, and that's not a bad thing. No. You know, it's just sometimes it's just not an appropriate thing. Yeah. I think there's a time and place for it to, to be the enthusiast versus the the researcher. I think the researcher is the boots on the ground communicator trying to communicate and and kind of link the history with the the lore of the spirit that is supposedly living in the house or wherever. Oh, fully agree. Yeah, fully agree. Do you use a, or when you're on your tour, do you have equipment? that the people can use in order to kind of maybe get some of that visualization that the spirits are around? We do hand out two ghost meters on the tour. Um, we also use a pendulum in one location and we do use a spirit box behind the courthouse. Nice. That's cool. We use on our tour, we, we have, uh, we have 12 K two meters to split between usually three or four groups. And uh, we've just loaded, all of us have just loaded up on new gear this year to try and uh, spice it up a little bit. And hopefully it works. Hopefully it does. But, uh, you know, the hard part about the K2 meters is trying to teach someone that it doesn't work in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or it does work really well when you hold it up next to your cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, that's another good one. We used to have one spirit in in our barn that we do we have the uh, world's oldest a-frame clydesdale barn and this thing is uh i think it's about 60 70 yards long it's it's pretty big and on the bottom floor we used to have this one guy who we called the cowboy and he loved the tour he was always he was always touching people's hair or shoulders or, or something. Merle knows who I'm talking about. We used to Debbie bring in, like, I remember one group I did, we had seven K two meters with us that day. Pardon me, eight K two meters that day. And when we made a circle around them, we asked him to step into that circle and light them up all to red at the exact same time and hold red and he would do that for us. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Then the idiots at the jail uh, at the uh, museum decided to put a jail cell in the barn. They converted uh, one stall into an old-looking jail cell. And almost every ghost in that building left. Oh no. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was creepy. That's where Mike and I actually had our uh, encounter with a giant spider looking shadow creature that was about six feet long crawling on the roof or <laughs> the ceiling of, of the bottom floor. Yeah. I don't know what that was, man. That was, that was creepy. Like was, I couldn't even, we say a spider thing, but I have, all I know is that it was terrifying <laughs> and big, like wide yeah. and big, you know, yeah. and it was scurrying like a bug would. Yeah. And going back to your jail cell, when they installed the jail cell there, did you ever bring up the theory of if you bring law into a lawless town, it makes the people scatter? We actually did. That's the one that actually makes the most sense. And I gave you credit for that, by the way. I didn't even steal that one from you. But, uh, Debbie, we when they put the jail cell in and all the spirits left, we, we've been trying to find them. We, we figure that the spirits are still roaming on the property, but they're just not in the jail or in the barn. Because, I mean, we were talking about a time when there it was lawlessness. Yeah. And what, what is doing, you know, putting a, a, a jail cell in there is going to freak them out thinking I'm out of here. I'm not going to jail. Right. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So have you guys had anybody tamper with buildings there or do they keep them as raw as they were back then? Because for our museum, they always seem to be the, the society there always seems to be tampering with buildings. Um, You know, they're, there's a lot of the buildings are under some restor restoration, um, but nothing that I think the spirits won't be happy with. Mm -hmm. um, Nevada City or uh, Virginia City is, you know, one big like historical site. So they have to be really careful and they're very strict regulations, what they can and can't do with the buildings. So, no, I don't think, you know, no, that, not that I know of has anyone really tampered with a building to the point where it's pissed off any of the spirits well that's good yeah yeah i wish we could say that up here but uh that's unfortunately not the case you know because i, I understand everybody wants to put their their own little spring on things and everything but you know what even moving a coffee can can upset the spirits mm -hmm. you, know, you got to be careful with that oh absolutely absolutely yeah so what do you say there, Merle? I say that um, next half hour, I want to go over the top three, I would say three most well-known ghost stories of Virginia City. Oh, that's going to be good. Be a strong that's going to be power good. half hour. Yep. Oh, for sure. Oh, that's going to put me on the spot. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, we're warming you up for it. We're yeah, definitely yeah. Warming, warming you up for it, Debbie. But, I mean... One other question before we go to break here, and we'll take a five minute break here at the bottom of the hour. But um, I'm I'm curious for you, Deb. Do you ever have any animal spirits that run around? Yeah, we talked about that uh, a little while ago. The only full bodied apparition, like clear, crystal clear, that I've ever seen was a dog. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. I apologize for repeating a question. I, I was kind of not here. I told so, her about your cat, your cat in the uh, the house at the 108 mile. Yeah, that, that that cat's pretty cool. The cat's really cool. We got about one minute to go here. Deb, what do you love about your tour? Um, that it's mine and I get to do it. <laughs> I mean, I just I get to share this history and these amazing stories with people from all over the place. How do you keep it refreshing and interesting? Because you're doing the tour a lot. Yeah. And after 15 years, I mean, you know, it can feel like you're doing the same thing. But I always tell people, you know, because we get people that plan their vacations around the tour. And I like the stories may stay the same, but the experience is going to change every time because you don't know how active the spirits are going to be. And we're always looking. We're, we're adding a new uh, we've added a new tour, not ghost related, but it's the CD history of Virginia city harlots and history tour. Oh, oh nice. Are what there are still, doing? are there still uh call girls there? I believe Julia Billet definitely still wanders the area. What, Will you be uh, doing what? that tour when I'm down there? Um, hopefully. <laughs> 
Hold on right there, guys. We're going to take a quick break here. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with your host, Dave Scott. All right, we got a five minute break here, guys. Copy that. Five minutes. Yeah, I'd, I'd be down to take that tour if, if it's operating when I when I'm there. That would be a cool. Yeah, we're working like on getting it back up. Um, it is really cool. I mean, it's no you know no ghost stories or anything. It's twenty one or over, so there is a bar, at least one bar stop, so you can go in and grab a drink. But it's all about prostitution and you know, some of the more famous true crime sort of stories up there. Oh, yeah. I'm down for the true crime. Okay. That that reminds me of, uh, I got to tell you this story, Deb. Uh, it, it, it's kind of along those routes. We have one ghost who we call the Blue Man. Uh, and he is just an absolute pervert. Just an <laughs> absolute pervert. So one night I am doing this tour of a, a ladies club that gets together once a month for coffee. And I got 15 ladies uh, taking the tour and, and we're in the area where the blue man is and they start getting really Randy with him. Oh. Like, like really Randy and every machine in my room was going off and we were trying to figure out his name. And so we're going through the alphabet, light up, light up the meters. If, you know, we hit your first name and we go, A, nothing, B, everything lights up. Okay. So is your name Brian? Is it Bob? Is it Bruce? Is it whatever? No response. Well, let's try and figure out your last name. We go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, nothing. H, I, J hits again. And I'm like, is your last name Johnson, Jameson? whatever. And then one of the girls said, uh, Dave, I, I don't think those are his initials. Oh no. <laughs> and I think she goes, I think that's what he wants. And as soon as she said that all of the machines lit up like anything, wow. and these ladies went crazy laughing, crazy laughing. That's funny. Oh yeah. It was hilarious. Totally perverted ghost. <laughs> There's one spirit up at the walk club that likes to use pretty foul language at times. So he's always funny when you get him coming across the spirit box. Do you get a lot? Uh, you know what? I'll ask you about that when we get back here in a couple minutes. But uh, we get a lot of transients up here. Because we're not really a town. We're a, we're a, if you go back to those days, it's a stopgap. So what we had is we we had a bunch of post houses up here that were like hostels, mm -hmm. and they were like every three four miles. And so at these post houses, that's where you could grab a meal, a shower. If if you had a lame horse, you could trade your horses. You could uh, get a, a good night's sleep, a poker game, a, a, sh a bath, not a shower, obviously, a bath, or if you, if, you know, because the prostitution uh, was going on, if you wanted to get lucky, you could get lucky. And, um, and so that's where these post houses were. And, um, and they ran straight up. And mm. yeah. There's a lot of ugly stuff up here, but I mean, I could, you could go on that trail right now and it is so haunted. Wow. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where you are. It is. There's ghosts everywhere on that trail. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. We don't Virginia city. I mean, back in the day, I'm sure there were a lot more transient people that came up there just trying to make their fortune. But today, um, there's usually only one homeless person up there. And I think they've been gone for a while now. There was a, a homeless guy several years ago that was shot on the main street in town by one of the deputies. And it was, it was really bad because 
he had the deputy actually had to end up, I think he like moved somewhere else or something, you know, and then there was another lady for a while, but it's Virginia city is hard to get to if you're homeless because you had to go up Geiger and it's a really windy road. So it's much easier to stay down in Reno. Yeah. No, I guess, uh, let me just see how much time we have here. Hold on. Uh, Oh, we got about 30 seconds here. How far is it from Reno to Virginia city? Um, again, depending on how well you drive winding mountain roads, um, it's about from downtown Reno. It's probably about 40 minutes. That's not too bad. No, it's not. So you could like take an Uber essentially to and from. Yeah. You would not get an Uber up there to bring you home. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, guys. Here, here, here we're going to get going here. <clears throat> Here we go. We're going to continue on with Ghosts of the Great White North. My name is Dave Scott. Merle is here. Debbie Bender is here from Bats in the Belfry out of Virginia City. Debbie, I want to ask you about transient ghosts. Because it is part of the gold rush and the silver rush, do you have a lot of one-time spirits who just seem to stop by and the next day they're gone? I think so, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that will report experiences of a spirit doing something that I've never heard of them doing before. And it's like, maybe that's a new one. There are some buildings up there that are reported to have portals where the spirits are constantly coming in and out of out of them. So, yeah, I think there are. Yeah, we get a lot of them. Those are the ones who uh, who really clam up when we ask about where their gold is hidden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever had a ghost tell you that they still have gold hidden in the mountains or have all the, uh, the wannabe prospectors and seekers gone and found all the gold around there that's maybe been hidden? I definitely believe that there is still gold buried on the outskirts of Virginia City, especially Six Mile Canyon. Um, but nope, them darn ghosts just will not tell me where it is. What would you do if one actually told you where it is? I would go find it and tell them, thank you so much. And hope you like the next tour guide that comes up here. <laughs> would be gone. Right. I mean, I know like on, on our area where I live, uh, like I said to you before, you know, the, the gold rush trail is about three quarters of a mile behind where I'm sitting. And when they built the airport runway here, uh, the private runway that we have right by my house, they actually, when they were digging up, preparing for the runway, they found a massive quantity of, of gold, like hundreds of thousands of dollars mm. worth of gold right on the, where the runway is. And there's still a bunch of people who believe that uh, all around us, there's still satchels of gold hidden in trees or or buried that will never come up. So the prospectors and and people who use those uh, metal detecting uh, machines, they're out here every year going for, trying to find the gold. Yeah, no, we have pretty strict rules in Nevada about metal detecting and stuff. So you got to be real careful with that. And honestly, there's probably, now Virginia City started off with gold, but what really put us on the map was the silver. So there was a lot more silver in Virginia City than there was gold. And the silver that was taken out of that mountain actually built San Francisco. So there's wow. more than likely silver, more silver buried. Um, the gold would be from the stagecoaches that got robbed. Right. Do you still have any ghost uh, stagecoaches coming in? There is supposed there are stories about one on Geiger Grade, where people will see a stagecoach with horses running across the st the road. Oh, that'd be so cool! And what's really weird about Geiger Grade, and I've experienced this over fifteen years several times, and I'm not saying this is exactly what it is. I don't know. I'm just saying it's weird. Is you will hear people tell you that there's some kind of time warp on Geiger, and you know, when you travel a road enough times, you kind of have like 
like little spots where you're like, oh, I just hit this spot. I'm almost home, you know, 10 minutes till I get home or something like that. And there'll be times we're driving home at night and all of a sudden we're almost at the bottom of Geiger. And it's like, wait a minute, we didn't oh. pass the flats. What happened to that? And you'll hear a lot of people tell stories like that. That would be interesting to investigate, actually. Yeah, I don't think anyone ever has. Damn. Merle, go ahead. <laughs> Debbie, it's tough story time. Okay. So your best three stories. So when people come to Virginia City, the things they what what attracts them? What are the top three paranormal related stories that have put Virginia City on the map? Um you know, the I don't know if there's so much as a story, but you know, ghost adventures, catching that full bodied apparition, walking across the ballroom in the Washoe Club was absolutely amazing. So that attracts a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like stories that have been around for decades and decades and decades, Rosie from the Silver Queen Hotel. That story has been going on for a long time. The story of Lena, the lady in blue at the Washoe Club, that's been around for decades. And what's her story? Um, there's a lot of different variations of it. Um, supposedly she moved up there with her husband who was wanted to strike it rich with the silver mines and, um, the guy who owns the saloon at the time at the Washoe club, he took a liking to Lena and decided that she should become one of his ladies. If you know what I mean? Yep. And in order to make that happen, Lena needed to not be married anymore. So he killed her husband. Lena eventually found this out and she went to go kill him. But this man's wife was working and she killed Lena. Oh, wow. And so yeah. supposedly that's Lena's story. And she still and when you go to the Washoe Club and you go in the museum, act, there's a picture, huge, huge picture hanging on the wall that I took where I believe I captured Lena, full-bodied apparition on the staircase of the Washoe Club. You can see the grains in her hair. You can count her toes as she's stepping down the stairs. Wow. That's a great shot. Great it's shot. Once, once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime shot. <clears throat> wow. Do you, I don't know how if you do this on your tour before you continue with your stories, but on your tour, like on our tour, we don't allow uh, us as guides to take photos. We want any evidence that we get to get from our people taking the ghost tour. Now, granted, yours is much different than ours. But do you get people sending you pictures of evidence quite a bit? And if so, where do you post them? We do. And the first couple of years, it was filling up our inbox really badly. So now we just tell people when they show us a picture, I... I do my best if I can debunk that, like if they, if they're on the tour and they take a picture right away, if I can debunk it, I'm going to, because mm -hmm. I want people to know when they have an experience, it's going to be the real deal. Um, but if I can't, I'm like, that's a really amazing picture. Please post it on our Facebook site. And that's where I have people post the pictures. Cause it just, it fills up your inbox if you do it oh, the other way. Sure. Now, have you yourself investigated Virginia City, like off the books, off like not tours? Like, have you been in these places with gear? Absolutely. I've investigated pretty much every single location up there that you can possibly investigate. Still working on, on a couple, trying to get them to let us in there to investigate. <laughs> and And what is your best evidence you've ever captured? What made you like... Oh man, this is this is what we got. The picture of Lena at the Washoe Club is fair. probably no, is one hundred percent the best picture I ever got. Um, the and I have a couple of pictures that people have sent me, and I'm what you call a skeptical believer. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to debunk everything before I say, "Oh my God, that's really good." And I've had people send me in some pictures. I'm like, this is too good to be true. And so I would have my friends who are trusted investigators and we would do everything we could to debunk that picture. And then when we couldn't, then you're like, oh my God, that's an amazing piece of evidence you just got there. I put myself in that category too. I'm pretty, 
I'm a skeptical believer. It takes a lot for me to have a holy crap moment. Exactly. But, and when you're like that though, those holy crap moments are so much better. Mm -hmm. I get, I get flack. I get flack for it being very skeptical. (laughs) But it is what it is, right? So Mm -hmm. now, where would you go? I'm just trying to think of because I have all these buildings in my head. To, I know you said uh, Carson City. Is that another place to ghost hunt? I know your Virginia City tours. Yeah, but Carson if you're City. if you're doing the whole circuit of Reno to Carson City to Virginia City, where would you ghost hunt there? Um, I would walk in Carson City. I would walk around at night. Um, the grounds of the Capitol building. I believe that's incredibly haunted around there. And then also the Nevada State Prison is in Carson City, which is incredibly haunted. So I would definitely check out those locations. Carson City is a cute little town, not that far from Virginia City. Um, do you they gotta check it out? Do they welcome ghost hunters as well? Yeah, they have a they have their own ghost tour down in Carson City, which has been going. Oh my gosh, I think 20, 25 years. Um, she's been doing it and. Um, really, really great stories, lots of history down there. Um, but the Capitol grounds at night have always creeped me out really bad. What goes on? Yeah. What's that? What goes on? You know, I don't really, I haven't been able to figure out like why it does. I know that and one of the things they have inside the Capitol building is the rope that John Millian was hung with. And John Millian was accused of killing Julia Bilet, the mo- one of that famous prostitute from Virginia City. I believe he was innocent. He swore until they put that noose around his neck that he was innocent. So that might, you know, might be his spirit hanging around there. Um, they also, you know, they have different other different artifacts that are inside that building and on the outside of that building that I think kind of help contribute to it. It's just, there's something about the Capitol grounds that I'm just like, yep, there's a lot going on here. Now what's her story that you said the prostitute that was killed? Well, what, what happened the Virginia city prostitute? So Julia was brutally murdered in her bed. She was beaten over the head. She was smothered with a pillow. She was punched. Um, And she was found dead by her best friend the next day. And um, John Millian, about a month or so later, was found trying to sell some of her possessions. Mm. So the town wanted, town was out for blood. They wanted somebody to hang for taking away their Julia. And he had her stuff on him. He said that he was just the person who was like watching out in case somebody came by, but there were two other guys that actually went into her room and killed her. Now, the thing is he didn't speak English very well. He was from France. And for a long time, he thought the whole thing was a joke that they weren't really going to hang him. They weren't really going to kill him. It was just a joke, (laughs) but they did kill him. They did hang him down six mile Canyon. In fact, the last time that Mark Twain was ever in Virginia city, he witnessed the hanging of John Millian and actually wrote about it. Oh, wow. Now, does it say, does she haunt anywhere? Uh, Julia Bilet? Yes. I believe she's all around town, yeah. Are you able, or let me ask you this. Are there certain times where your ghosts prefer to come out rather than not come out? It's, I don't think it's times so much as the energy of the people that are on the tour that night. Right. Um, You know, I mean, if we have people who are just there to have that jump scare and they're not going to get it and they're not really interested in it, I don't think the spirits really come out for that. Um, You know, our Halloween tours were usually packed. We actually will run 35 to 40 people on a Halloween tour. And we have luckily, knock on wood, we have had some of the best energy for those tours. And it's amazing the pictures that people are getting, the stuff we get through the spirit box, all that stuff. So it's, to me, it's just the energy, you know, like the spirits are like, oh, I like you people. I'm going to come out and talk to you. Or I'm having a good day and I like you. I'm going to come out and talk to you.
do the spirits there know that it is 2024? I have no idea. It's actually a good question, Dave. Like, are they stuck in their time or do yeah. can they observe modern time? I, I try not to ask them questions like that. Um, I try to stay away from the, you know, can you tell us your name? Because how many times do you want to be asked the same question? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's more, I try to do, one of the, when I first started doing paranormal investigations, one of the best advice I think I was ever given was, if you want the spirits to come out and talk to your group, sit down and ha have a conversation with your group and let them join in if they choose. 100%. That's, that's like yeah. my rule of thumb. Whenever I investigate, I start to roll audio immediately because you get your best EVPs when you're just setting up or shooting, mm -hmm. shooting the breeze with the people around before you even start your investigation. Like nine yeah. times out of 10, that's when you get it. And it's because they just want to be interactive. They want to be part of the conversation too, which yeah. I appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. What is the mood of the spirits that you have there? Are they usually pretty jovial? Are they sad? Are they angry? Um, on our tour, we do not interact with any angry spirits. Um, as far as jovial, you know, Rosie, Rosie can be happy and playful, and you can kind of get that feeling like she's in a really good mood. So can Peter behind the courthouse. But like anybody who's alive, they have bad days and they have good days. So I think, it, again, it just depends on the energy from the group that you're bringing through to talk to them. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because, you know, up here, we, we have to deal with kind of all sorts as well. Mm -hmm. For the most part, they're pretty jovial mm -hmm. and, and happy. But we got a couple cranky buggers in there. That's for <laughs> sure. Yeah. And the Washoe Club is like that. Now, if you guys go... Um, if you guys want to add on the tour of the Washoe Club after you take mine, we can see about, you know, you guys doing that. They have spirits like that up in the Washoe Club. Oh, some are no. pretty cranky. <laughs> some don't want you up there. And some are like, heck, yeah, I'm going to interact with you. I like you. So they deal with that in the Washoe Club more than I do. Because the one good thing about my tour is I can be selective about which spirits I interact with. There was um, this one little girl that we used to interact with on the boardwalk. And she would come and light up the K2s like crazy. And you, whenever she was around, you always felt happy. One time on one of the tours, it was a pretty crowded tour. The K2s were, grow were going off like crazy. Everyone decided to pull out their cell phone cameras. And they all like seemed to take a picture at the same time with their flashes. So all these flashes went off at one time. K2s went dead. And for months after that, she would not come out and talk to us. It was like someone told me that it was probably like getting electrocuted for her with all of that flash going off. I don't know how true that is. But for whatever reason, she didn't like that. So we stopped, we stopped talking about her on the tour. And then after a few months, I was like, okay, let's try again. But. I'm going to tell people, please do not take pictures at this location because it's going to scare her. And people, for the most part, were really respectful. But if she was in a good mood and she was interacting with us a lot, I would notice people would go back to that location when the tour was over with and start taking flash pictures. Uh. And then she just stopped wanting to talk to us again. And I'm like, you know what? I'm So we just took her off the tour completely because I'm like, I'm not going to put her through this. She obviously doesn't like it. People are going to keep doing this. So we don't talk about her anymore. We let her just go be her happy little self. But I will, like, if I'm by myself, when I'm walking along that area in the boardwalk, I'll stop and say hi and be like, I hope you're doing okay. And I want you to know that I miss you. That's well, awesome. That's nice. You mentioned that there was a couple buildings that that just do not want the tour around or, or whatever. And I'm not saying that's pro probably a you know, they're doing it out of behest or anything like that. But, you know, with, with a town like you're in, how come they don't want to participate? There's, there's no building up there that we cannot stop in front of and talk about. Nobody has a problem with us doing that. Um, the problem with going in with some of these buildings is they have to meet a certain code for the public to go in there. Mm -hmm. You have to have sprinklers up and exit signs and all that other stuff. 
And a lot of the buildings don't have that. And a lot of the buildings are still under renovation. And it's more that because, you know, we don't want to bring people in there that are might be intoxicated or something like that. We just don't go inside. Plus, I would have to charge a whole lot more money than I do to go inside those buildings because that's how much the people want who own that location. Dang. That's incredible. Uh, is a lot of those properties owned by, by businesses and like different people? They, they're they owned by um, individual people. And most of the buildings that are not open to the public is really just because they're under restoration. And it just takes a lot of money and a lot of time to bring those buildings back to where the public can go in there. But all the other, all the other, the actual businesses that are open, you can walk into any one of those businesses and walk up to the person working and say, you got a ghost story and they're going to smile and they're going to tell you all about their ghost stories and their resident ghost that lives inside that building. That's awesome. Getting all we excited. Three, Dave. We got about <laughs> three and a half minutes uh, before we have to say good night here to both of you. And uh, obviously due to the technical difficulties on the show, I'm going to be uh, cutting this uh, show a little bit, uh, a little bit short tonight than what we normally do. And I do apologize, but Debbie, I mean, how, how often do you do the tours? Um, we do it every Friday and Saturday night. And then during the week, depending on how many reservations we get. Merle. Uh, I, I'm excited for the tour, uh, especially with, with all of our Reno guests, Dave. And I just want to learn everything right now, but we only have two minutes. Well, we'll nail it because we still got two minutes to fill. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I've just I've just been enjoying the conversation with De with Debbie tonight. And what 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 do we have to look forward to with this tour? Like I like how interactive is it? Like when you do Dave's tour, it's extremely interactive, and he brings out the. I know he's a big pendulum guy too. Do you let your your tour people use the pendulum and all that sort of stuff? Or is that more of like a you using that? In the oh, I don't. You, I'm terrible with the pendulums. I am never able to get anything off of them. I am not the person you want using a pendulum. I usually choose one or two guests to come forward and try the pendulum. I usually choose women because women seem to be more in tune with, with the pendulum than men. Um, we are on a bit of a time limit because people do usually add on the Washoe Club tour afterwards. So I got to make sure that we get the group back to the Washoe Club in time for them to go upstairs. But we try to make it as interactive as possible. But I I mean, there's so much to look forward to when you come to Virginia City. Oh, four days is not enough. What were you going to say, Dave? <laughs> I, I I just, you know, I like I said, I haven't been up there in 34 years, 1990 was the last time I was up in Virginia City. And, and you know what? If you've never been up there, go. It is one of those places where you're, you're never, ever going to be disappointed by saying that this is something that you made a mistake with or wasted time on. It is beautiful up there. It really is. It is. It's a it's an amazing little town. Oh, and I just saw now that the ghost magnet was in the group. So I want to give a huge shout out to Michelle LeBaron because I absolutely love her to pieces. And hopefully she'll be up that weekend and you'll get to say hi to her. Awesome. Fellow ghost hunter. That's amazing. <clears throat> Merle, big thank you for you coming in tonight. And Debbie, please tell everybody where they can find more information on Virginia City Ghost Tours. They want to go to our website, www.virginiacityghosttours.com. And Merle, where could people find the Paranormal Road Trippers? You can find the Paranormal Road Trippers at the Paranormal Road Trippers on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And I'm part of a collective website, ourhauntedheritage.com. I love it. And once again, I want to say a big thank you. To everybody tuning us in tonight on the show. Okay, I do apologize for Mother Nature in uh, knocking down a couple of trees tonight, which really zapped the, the life 
out of uh, me for a little bit, but thank you. I have to go do some editing. I appreciate all of you. We'll, we'll talk to you all tomorrow night where my guest will be uh, somebody familiar with our chat room. Susan Alloway will be our guest. She's going to talk about her alien encounters. Earl Gray from MUFON, who investigated this case, will be with us as well. So thank you, everybody, for coming on. Thank you to Jake, Deidre, Joanne, Susan, and Ghost for the Super Chats tonight. Very much appreciate your love and support. If you're new here, please hit subscribe. Ring that bell as we continue to grow Spaced Out Radio on our social media. Thank you, guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. healthy my friend you too you need bail money give me a call always dad take care (laughs) you too